Now, you know I've been reviewing the Copilot Plus PCs. These are the early look reviews. I want to really give it a long-term review, and then I'll score them, and of course, and do all the things I normally do. But since this is such a new processor and they're ironing out the bugs and the kinks, I want to give it a fair shake. That being said, I already looked at the Asus VivoBook S15. I looked at the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X, which I really love, Surface Pro 11, the Surface Laptop 7, and the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge, although not my favorite of the bunch. We're gonna talk about it, future video, of course. But I have HPs here today. They did kindly send it over. And for the most part, I do like it. There are some issues here that we need to talk about. The first one, of course, is going to be this dim display. It doesn't go above 300 nits. That's a big issue for me. Uh, performance, not quite as good as the others that have been released in the initial wave here. So we're gonna talk about that. It is running the Snapdragon X Elite, the 78100 variant. We'll talk about performance numbers and so forth. We're seeing excellent battery life. This has got to be one of the coolest and quietest Windows laptops I've ever seen. We'll talk about that but it is not perfect and i think there are a few things they can do to improve on this we're going to get into it more in this first look review hey everybody it's andrew and this is the hp omnibook x running the brand new snapdragon x elite brand new 2024 coming up Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from HP, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, one thing I like about the Omnibook and the approach HP's taking here is its price coming in at $1199.99. You could pick it up over at Best Buy and that gets you the Snapdragon X Elite, one terabyte of storage, 16 gigabytes of memory in that Meteor Silver color. For those interested, I'll drop a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy it. Let's get this out of the box. It says Omnibook powered by AI experiences and they have a pretty unique um, graphics or logo for their AI. It's sort of like this squiggly kind of thing. You can see it here, pretty interesting. Let's take this out. This is the unit. Oh, that feels pretty good. So this one has some documentation here. I don't really care about it. Here we get the power cord we've seen a million times. One familiar looking 65 watt USB type C braided cable from HP. We've seen this before and I'm, I like their ch travel charges are pretty good. And there it is. And that's that Meteor Silver. It actually looks pretty nice actually. Very nice actually. All metal, feels good. You're looking at 1.339 kilograms and that is two pounds, 15.2 ounces. So there you go. And then with the power charger and the power cord, 1.635 kilograms, and that is three pounds, 9.7 ounces. So that is the total travel weight. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side are two USB Type-C ports. The first one is USB 4.0. That gives you Thunderbolt functionality. And I was able to connect my Sabrent Thunderbolt drive. No problem with that. And they both are full function for those wondering. Now, moving over to the right side, you get a USB Type-A port. It's a drop jaw style and a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. Notably missing, there's no SD card reader and there's no HDMI. So that would have been great to have that. And I would have liked to have seen those two USB Type-C ports split up, one on each side, a little bit more convenient. Instead, here we get them both on the same side. That's a little bit of a nitpick. Overall, decent port selection could be better. Now, like most laptops nowadays, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard, and this is configured with 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM, running at the very fast 8448 megatransfers per second. And that, of course, is because it's soldered in. You can get those very fast speeds, and that's exactly what we see here. But it is not upgradable by the user, so make sure you have enough RAM here for your needs. 16 gigabytes is certainly enough for most people, that's for sure. Now, when it comes to storage, good news, it is upgradable here. It's an 
M.2 2280 SSD. And as you can see from the reads and writes, not the greatest I've seen here in 2024. I know it supports PCIe Gen 4, and these are more like PCIe Gen 3 speeds, which is a little bit disappointing. But the good news is, as the user, you can upgrade it yourself. But kind of disappointing, we're not seeing better speeds. But that being said, it is certainly fast enough for what most people do. So it's not too much of a concern, and I don't think it's a deal breaker here. Now, when it comes to the wireless, you're looking at Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth combo card. It is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user. And the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth are working fine. There's no issues with either one. That being said, it would have been nice to have Wi-Fi 7 making it a little bit more future-proof. We don't get that here. That's a little disappointing. But again, like I said, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth have not been an issue. Okay, we need to talk about the display, and I think I'm a little bit disappointed here. It's not a terrible display, don't get me wrong. 14 inches, 2.2K resolution, IPS, 2240 by 1400, and that is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. But the biggest problem here is that it's limited to 300 nits in total brightness here, and that is a bit disappointing. And it's certainly the dimmest display out of all the new Coplay Plus PCs we've been looking at here with the Snapdragon X Elite. So again, I could have been bright here and that 300 nits is just a little too dim for my liking now it is a multi-touch display that's worked out well it's got decent coverage of the color gamut it is color accurate uh the contrast is pretty good the black levels are good so everything seems good in terms of the metrics with the exception of the screen brightness it should have been at least 400 nits maybe 500 nits uh, considering the slim 7x from lenovo in the yoga line there that we took a look at can peak as bright as a thousand nits when it comes to hdr and here's the other thing about this display. It's only 60 hertz in terms of the refresh rate. The others get higher. The Yoga Slim 7X, 90 hertz. We saw the Surface devices go up to 120 hertz. Uh, I think you saw a really good display on the Asus uh, VivoBook S15. That goes up to 120 hertz. So I think you get the picture here. Certainly the Samsung, the Galaxy Book 4 Edge, got to 120 hertz. So this is the only one with a 60 hertz display. Now, of course, that's going to benefit you in terms of battery life, which is quite excellent on this device. We'll get into that in a little bit bit, but I just felt it was a little too dim, the display, and it could have been better with a higher refresh rate here. We don't get that. Now, consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube has been okay on this. I've had no issues with it. There's no HDR here, so that's another issue that I found with this device in terms of the display. So I would say it's a bit disappointing overall, considering what its competition were able to do. They could have put a better panel in this. I know HP has them. They put them in other devices. They should have put it in, especially on this Omnibook X, which is a consumer-facing device, and it just could be better. Now, it's not terrible, like I said, but it could be better. So this is the 5 megapixel IR camera on this new HP Omnibook X here for 2024. And I'm shooting this in the Windows default app here for the camera app, of course. And it is 1440p video, which of course is great. And it has a shutter switch above the camera module that allows you to turn off the camera for more security and privacy. That's good. It's a slider. And what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality of the internal mics here? Now, this is... An AI-based unit, of course, a Copilot Plus PC. It also has an NPU to handle some of these AI or studio effects here. We got the auto framing. So if I put that on here, go out of frame and works pretty good. Pretty responsive there. Uh, that's not too bad. Now, there are a couple of new things here. Portrait light, which certainly is supposed to help with the lighting. I don't think I see any difference, but whatever. Eye contact we've seen before. You get the background effect, standard blur. Portrait blur, okay, we've seen those before, but we have something new here, creative filter. This is illustrated, watercolor, and animated. Now, I'm not gonna really use them, but again, they're trying new things here. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Overall, what do you think about the camera? I am curious to know. Okay, let's talk performance here, and this has the Snapdragon X Elite. Now, it's the X1E78100, and it's the lower level of the X1 Elite, or certainly better than the X Plus, but it doesn't get the benefit of the dual-core boost that you'd get on the higher-end models here of the X1 Elite, so just keep that in mind. But that being said, doing Microsoft Office email web browsing has all been very good on this. I've had no issues for everyday tasks and remained cool and quiet, by the way, very little 
fan noise and it never got overly hot. I saw a decent single core multi core, although it is on the lesser side when you compare it to the other Copilot Plus PCs that I took a look at. So they are limiting performance here in hopes of getting it cool and quiet. And of course, in maximizing battery life, which is quite excellent. We'll get into that in a moment. But I did notice a difference on battery versus plugged in when it comes to the single core and multi core. Single core is pretty similar, but on multi core, on battery, was a lot less than when you plugged it in. Now, I did set it to performance mode in both times that I tested it here. So, a uh, very interesting result, a big difference between plugged in and on battery. I was hoping it to be more MacBook Air like, having similar performance whether on battery or plugged in. So, that's a little disappointing there. Now, when it comes to graphics, the integrated Adreno graphics are okay. Again, it's not going to be better than the Intel Arc graphics, it's not going to be better than the AMD Radeon 780M. I did run the 3D Mark Time Spy and Firestrike scores in emulation mode, and the results are exactly what you'd expect here. Not quite as good. And when it comes to gaming, it was been pretty much hit or miss, like it's been on a lot of these Copilot Plus PCs on Windows on ARM. It's a little bit hit or miss. And when it comes to video editing, I would hold off if that's what you really want to do with this, if it's going to be your main laptop for that. I was able to run the beta version, DaVinci Resolve Studio 19 on this, and it had some quirks, it had some bugs, and it does work, so I was able to uh, render a video and do all that, but it's not optimized, and I think it's going to get better through time. As far as After Effects and Premiere Pro from Adobe, they're going to be releasing a Windows on ARM version. Right now, they don't have it in the store, so you won't be able to get that, so you have to hold off on that, but that is coming soon from what I understand. So video editing and gaming are not the strong suits so far out of the gate with these initial Copilot Plus PCs, but if you stick with everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, everything works really well, even on this Omnibook X. And when I ran the Time Spy stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, it got a passing score of 99.7%, meaning it detected virtually no thermal throttling under heavy load. And that's a good thing. And it's got to be one of the coolest and quietest, obviously never going above 35, 36 degrees Celsius above the keyboard, below the display on the underside, maybe 40, 41 degrees Celsius at the hottest point. And that is under maximum load. So the theme here has obviously been very cool in terms of the surface temperatures. And check out the fan noise here or lack thereof. Look at this. I'm running a Time Spy stress test, pushing this to the maximum here. And it never went above maybe 31 decibels, which is pretty low. It's basically non-audible for a lot of people, but maybe slightly you can hear it. But the overall takeaway is very cool and very quiet. I like that. Now, battery life is excellent on the HP Omnibook X here. It has a 59-watt-hour battery, and it did 15 hours and 44 minutes on the video playback test. Now, I did these tests, and they're all the same, except this one has 60 hertz because it doesn't go above that. But other than that, I ran that same 4K video I streamed over YouTube via Wi-Fi with the brightness set to 40% in the balance mode, and I would say excellent result here, very power efficient, and will give you that endurance that we're looking for on these ARM-based processors. But of course, there is a disclaimer. Everybody's use case is a little bit different, so your mileage may vary. I just want you to keep that in mind. And I would say for everyday use, the performance here in terms of the battery has been excellent. The endurance lasted pretty much all day. A typical work day for me has a lot of mixed usage. You could do video conferencing. You can do a lot of office work. You can look at a lot of videos and so forth, consume media. And I would say it lasted all day without having to plug in. So the endurance has been excellent on the Omnibook X. All right, let's talk about the keyboard, and I actually really like it. The tactility, the feedback, the overall key travel, excellent on this. Very comfortable for typing out documents, emails, and the like. It's a really good keyboard here, and I like the overall feedback it gives. I never felt like my fingers were going to bottom out. I think HP does a really good job here. And like these Copilot Plus PCs, it does have the Windows Copilot key here, and that's, of course, going to activate the AI. Of course, a lot of those features are not available here at the launch, so they're coming later, such as recall and all that. So stay tuned. We'll talk more about that soon. 
but the keyboard itself was very good. It has a multi-stage backlight that worked well. The white LED backlight against the dark keys was easy to see, so you can get work done here in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And I would say the touchpad is good. It's a precision touchpad that was responsive enough, certainly for two-finger scrolling and doing all the gestures. It's not a haptic touchpad like we saw on the Surface Laptop 7, which I thought was excellent done by Sensel there. This one is actually pretty good in terms of a regular style touchpad, diving board style touchpad, everything you needed to do, it worked and it's nicely sized. Now, one thing I noticed using it for a week or so, there was a little bit of screen wobble when typing, and I noticed that it would tip over a little bit. It was a little bit top heavy if you put a little bit too much pressure when using the touchscreen. So it's a little bit concerning in terms of the engineering there. I thought they could have done a more balanced job there. That's not quite what you get. Now, the HP Omnibook X sports dual speakers, they're poly studio speakers, and I think they're pretty good. They have a decent volume, mids, decent bass on it, overall good sound, but I want you to be the judge. You let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, let's give it a listen. Okay, let's bring it all home. Initial impressions here with the HP Omnibook X. It's a good device. Don't get me wrong. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I don't love its display. I don't like the 60 hertz refresh rate. I don't like the fact that it can't go above 300 nits. Too dim for my liking, and especially when you compare it to others, such as the Yoga Slim 7X, which can peak as bright as 1,000 nits in HDR. The Surface Pro 11 can get very bright, as well as the Laptop 7 from Microsoft. So there are other options out there. Even the Asus got brighter with its uh, beautiful OLED display, and the Samsung got brighter with its AMOLED 2X display, the dynamic display. And again, those had higher refresh rates. This doesn't. So I'd like to see an improvement there. A little bit of screen wobble, and it wasn't weighted properly. You can tip it over a little bit if you press it too hard in terms of the touch display. It might tip over, which is a little bit jarring. So hopefully the engineers can fix that. Hopefully they can put a better display option, maybe even OLED next year. We'll see. But again, it's a competitive price coming in at $11.49 over at HP's website. You can pick it up over at Best Buy for $11.99. Again, links for everything will be in the description below. I think the display and even the performance to some extent could hold it back a little bit. Some of the others at launch are doing a little bit better in terms of the single multi-core performance, although not a huge difference when you're doing everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. It worked perfectly fine. I would like to see a faster SSD as well. It was a little bit on the low side, although you can upgrade it yourself, which is a big positive. And it is a full-size M.2 2280, which I like to see. So that's good. And it's running the fastest RAM you can get. It's soldered in, so you cannot upgrade it yourself. But the overall takeaway is the display is holding it back. It would be better for a higher refresh rate along with a brighter display overall. But if you don't mind the display and you're willing to work with that, then that's fine because you're getting all day battery life. And this might be one of the coolest and quietest laptops I've ever used. It's that good. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. And don't forget to check out my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.